Hello everyone. Hello. I thought uh, uh, most of you have greeted you on registration here. Hey? So it's just a careless of saying hello again. <laughs> um, I just here to give a testimony about my life here at Foundations for Farming. When I came here four years ago, I was just a spoiled girl. All she knew was shopping, especially shoes and dress well. <laughs> that was what I was good at and doing finance. So when I came, uh, I got a call and I'm saying, okay, I'm looking for a job to be an accountant. So I have to wear my high heels, my slacks, and my nails. That's all. And get paid and go shopping again. <laughs> That's what was, what, this is what I was thinking. And this is what I've lived for the past years. So for me, that was the usual. I'm just going to another step. But foundations for farming then, uh, Tend everything around. They have this thing of just turning lies. I just don't know what is it, but they have got this thing of turning lies. I got a call from a friend of mine, Petty, and she said, you know what? Uh, come at our workplace, they're looking for an accountant. So I came here, I was interviewed, and then the next day I came in my high heels. Little did I know there was mud, so in the stones. <laughs> Oh, it was a pain. <laughs> Everyone else had boots and wax suits. I was the only one wearing this skirt and this dress and with manicures and pedicure. I felt so out of place. I managed for a few months to keep up and just like say, oh, I don't care. They've got their life. I've got my life. So we'll see who get tired. <laughs> Unfortunately, I got tired. <laughs> As you can see, I'm dressed like this. I never thought I would come to work dressing like this in jeans and in t-shirt. This is the work of God. <laughs> it's just the work of God. So, when I came to Foundation for Farming, my life changed. I think we started going to devotions and being taught. And God also, he brought me here for a reason. You know, he gave me John 15 verse 16 for the past three years, saying, you did not choose me, but I chose you. So when I got a call, I thought I'm choosing to go to Foundations for Farming. But he had seen it already, and he needed to work a thing in me, and then he chose me. Having that phone call, it was him orchestrating his way into my life, changing the way that I see life. And definitely he did that. Now I know that you can go for a month without salary, you can go for three months without salary, and you can really go for three months without buying a pair of nice heels. <laughs> <laughs> All now that is important is the lives that we do here, is the ministry. I no longer stress about where will I get the next Gucci, where will I get the nice pairs of shoes, all I care about is, have we prayed enough? Whose life have we changed? Did the Mandevo guy have enough finances to come here? Has Shaq sent us the money, Craig? What's happening? Did you get an email from Emmy? What are they saying? Because now when we see the people who just gave testimonies, it changes you totally. You can't meet those guys and remain thinking about shoes. <laughs> You can't hear their stories and think about your salary and nice food. Here, now, what I do is kingdom business. I've got to understand that from 1 Corinthians 3, that I'm not my own sufficient, but God gives us sufficient. That he chose me here. I'm handpicked to come to Foundation for Farming. I was handpicked. Now I understand that God knew where he wanted to take me. But he knew outside the world I couldn't do it because I was just too spoiled. I had to come to a place where I see lives and where the work of God can change in me. Coming here, you might think you're just coming for a conference, but you were handpicked. You might think that you chose to come here, but he chose you when he got, when he got that invitation. It was just by divine appointment for that he can change a life. Now what we do is working in accounts with Craig, knowing we don't have money each month, trying to work around salaries and stuff. 
I've started to realize that we are not our own sufficiency, but God is. I've started trusting in God more than ever. Just not for my life, but for the lives of Mandevu, for the lives of uh, Chivu, for the life of New Hope, for the life of Tajita. You see the guys at the back dancing in wheelchairs, in wheelchairs. then you start to realize what's a pair of shoes. Really, I can't go into the field because I've got nice nails. But when you see those gentlemen dancing there, you are changed. So now what I understand is, I was here by God. I was handpicked. And now every time I tell Craig when uh, we don't have money, he said, you know what are we going to do? I say, he's our sufficiency, Craig. We can make it. We can, I'm looking at the figures, we can make it. And each month we just say, oops, God, you have done it again. <laughs> when we think we have felt, he just comes through. And then now I got to understand that there is some way he's taking us so that he's teaching me and other people at Foundation for Farming that we are nothing without him. I got to understand that once we leave him, we are going to die. I told people that in this month, if you don't have Christ, you are dead. You are going to die. He has to be our hope. He has to be our sufficiency. He has to be our total trust. So this has been a journey for me now to get to understand that without him, I'm just nothing. Without his sufficiency, I can't do it. It was a hard work from God. I salute him. For me to change the way that I think, he's great and is worthy to be praised. Now I see, I, I now pray that I've tried you and tested you and seen that you are worthy to be praised because you changed me. So at Foundations of Farming, that's now what we do. We put our trust in him. We say, let's go guys. We only have Jesus. And what can separate us from the love of God? Is it shoes? No. Is it salaries? Definitely no. What can separate us? There is nothing that can separate us from the love of God. All now we do is, guys, let's soldier on and let's sign for Jesus. Because that's the reason we came here. Each and every one was chosen. No one came to Foundation So Farming and no one comes to Charms by accident. You have been handpicked for you to come here. So, and when you leave, you live with a testimony and a change of heart. So this is my testimony, this is where I am. Where I say, he's my sufficient. He changed me. I trust in him. I look my hope in him. So the people ask us, how are you sustaining? Oh, I say, don't fear for us because he's our sufficient. Don't fear that you're going to close. No, this is kingdom business. We are not doing try and error. We are on mission. We are not trying, but we are on mission. So guys, don't fear for us. We are doing kingdom business and he's our sufficient. Thank you. I, I would like to just say, I would like to thank God for my life. I would like to thank God for most of the people in, all the people in Foundations for Farming team, for they are part of my life. I'm a member of the family, of that family of Foundations for Farming. Um, my theme is we walk by faith and not by sight. Like what Trudeau was saying, with nothing in the bank account, but we made it to the champs. It's about faith. We need to boost our faith and trust in the Lord and know that he, there's a verse in the Bible which says, you will not take you where his grace is not sufficient. So God's grace is always sufficient in our lives. As for me, I was just born in a family of eight, um, being number five in the list, but unfortunately four of them passed away and now I'm number two. Two girls, two boys, and two girls, two boys passed away. I was married to Timothy Kasangarare with three children, one boy, two girls. Um, 
and in 2000 um in 2000 i separated with my husband and in 2008 i was part of foundations for farming god chosen me to be part of foundations for farming i was not chosen as a mistake but to fulfill a purpose that he has chosen me for here at foundations for farming um from what we we learn from our devotions our work as we teach i've learned a lot and i've been really transformed physically and spiritually um i separated with my husband from 2000 up to 2012 and in 2012 god came to me and came to several people in our congregation and in different congregations and told me to forgive him and reconcile it wasn't an easy thing to do for i was hurt um but i also wrestled with god until he gave me the picture of my husband um wearing a don't touch my shoe trousers with socks with some walls you know things were not well with him as well but god said to me don't look at that silver and gold are mine so i have to listen to what god said and i received him but my children did not were not welcoming their father because they were hurt so there was a conflict between the father and the children but later on god resolved everything and in 2012 i said my husband came back and now we now we are now four years being together after a reconciliation i just want to thank god for giving me that heart of not getting into another marriage for those 12 years because when people came to me saying can i marry you i would read them the verse from the bible which says as long as he is alive you are committing adultery mm -hmm. so i obeyed that verse in the bible until up to now i'm now with my husband mm -hmm. and yes there are um portals humps in life <laughs> but God is taking us through. For he says, you will never take us where his grace is not sufficient. Um, there are a lot of things that I could have shared with you, but now time is not on our side. Yeah. I just want to say thank you, God, for making me part of Foundations for Family. Um, family. Um, through Petty's teachings, to those who know me they can say for sure i've been transformed even myself i can also feel it that a lot have changed in my life even through the book that we do um money map when we teach money map we are being humbled so much and being taken to a certain level you know always god will put you from one level to another level to another level going like that even when we teach about uh, foundations for family our mandate is not to teach but to do it ourselves to move as models mm -hmm. to teach what you do not to teach what you don't do what you don't do you know it's very easy to say do this yet you cannot do it but when you do it i'm sure there is this prophet which says it's the wearer who knows where the shoe pinches because sometimes if you don't wear the shoe you won't know where it is pinching but the one who is wearing them will say this shoe is pinching so by practicing what we teach we now know where the shoe pinches <laughs> thank you so much
Maritino na matira chikafu chabi kwa chitu mwari hopa kwa zae mawoka abika. Mkopo wa nusha iwa nukusinga peri. Amen.